Hey guys, welcome to the project. This one is called Liana. The main feature of this bag is all about the mitered handles and giving a little bit more look, a little bit more detail around the mitered handle. We also learn how to put the zipper on the top. Now this one, I'm showing you how to do it with a bus banding, which means no matter what back pattern you have that you might have bought from um, elsewhere on the web, you could use, as long as you have a straight top of your bag, you could use this technique and put a zipper on the top. Now you could go back and use this technique on all the tote bags I have shown you. This is super simple, super easy. Let's go ahead and get started with this project. And place a pin. Just open it up like so and let it be there. Okay. Now what we need to do, we are going to attach the zipper to the bottom of this bus binding. Now at the end, just fold an inch on either side. So that way, that would be kind of neatly finished. Again, go and fold an inch on this side. When you measure this, this should measure 15 inches. If it's not 15 inches, go ahead and fold a little bit more on either side. So that should be absolutely fine, okay? Now what we're going to do is just go and pin the top of the binding to the lining, like so. Now we just go ahead and place the zipper just underneath, like so. You don't need to um, kind of push the zipper too much inside, but how much air that you push inside and leave the allowance from the zipper till the binding, just make sure it is in a straight line, okay? Now what we're going to do is we need to, before we go ahead and sew this, we need to make sure where we're going to place the pocket. This pocket needs to go underneath the zipper. Now if you find it very difficult, just go ahead and bind the edges with another bias binding and then you could place the pocket slightly underneath like this. However, the design is that I want to put this underneath there. So let me go and center the pocket first and then place it where it needs to be, like so. And I'll just place, place a couple of pins. And now I go and place the zipper, like so. And then go ahead and pin the zipper to the lining and go and sew an edge stitch on top of the binding. We're gonna start from this corner and turn the corners here, go all the way, turn the corners here and go back and finish at the edge. I have changed my foot to the blind hem foot so my edge stitching will be neat. So we're just going to start off at the edge like so. Turn the corners. When the zipper puller comes near to the foot, it can't pass through because of the hindrance. So we're just going to lift this up and open the zipper. Let it go away. So now we can just go ahead and finish it like so. Okay, here we have sewn the zipper on one side. This is the beauty of using an open end zipper because then you don't have to edge finish this. But if you use a closed end zipper, then you might have to cover this up with a little piece of fabric, which is covered in a separate video. Now what we need to do is go ahead and attach the other side of the lining to this side of the zipper. So we're gonna go ahead and do exactly the same. Basically just um, take your bias binding and fold the exact amount you have folded before, like so. In case, if you have folded a little bit more, a little bit less, then that just makes it perfect that we have folded the equal amounts. And let's take the other lining. And now, again, we have the center notch mark and the fold is here. Let me just go and make a crease. And I'm going to open the crease like so and place it in the center and place a pin. 
because this seam allowance is going to go when we go and sew the bag so that's not going to be visible at all, that's all going to be hidden. Now what we have to do is go ahead and bring this close to this side of the binder. It, it, it will be a lot easier this time because we don't have a pocket underneath. As long as you have the starting point right, you don't have to worry about the ending point, okay? So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hold it like so and pin the zipper tape and the fabric together. So my starting point is right. So let me now just go ahead and open the zipper, open this out. And all I have to do now is go and sew exactly the same way we did the other side. Just go ahead and sew all the way through. Just going to start at the edge there and turn the corners. Just going to remove the pin because my zipper is holding, the needle is holding the zipper. That's the zipper we have just sewn on the other side and this is the first one that we have sewn in. And now what we're going to do is just go and close the side seams from here to here, here to here, starting and finishing with a back stitch. We have sewn the side seams on the lining. So let's go ahead and do exactly the same for the main fabric. So here is the main fabric. Now my main fabric, this, was, this is a curtain fabric and it frays like crazy. So I have to be very careful and you can see they're all, almost fraying across. So I'm not going to make a center notch mark because otherwise I'm going to lose about half an inch of my fabric. I'll just make a pencil mark later on for my center marking. Now I go ahead and sew a stitch on either side, starting and finishing with a back stitch, and that is a half an inch seam. We have sewn the side seams. Now we need to press the seams open. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold it like so and put my sleeve roll in and just open my seams. Okay, my fabric is not sitting flat, so what I'm going to do is just go ahead from the top, I'm going to do a top stitch from either side. Just gonna place my foot on top of the fabric, align the edge of the foot to the center join, and then just sew a top stitch. When we come to the end, just turn around like so and stitch on the other side. Okay, we have sewn the top stitch, now the seams are sitting flat on both the sides. I'm going to keep this aside because we need to attach the handles before we go ahead. Before we prepare the handle base, we need these. So let's go ahead and iron this to the fabric. Okay, this is a double-sided interfacing. So if you iron on this side, it's going to stick to the iron. So let's turn it over like so. Just make sure you have left enough fabric to fold over on the other side and just go and press on one side. Give it a couple of minutes so that the fabric will glue to the interfacing at the bottom. So now you can see it's glued. Now what we're going to do is hold it in like so and tuck it and only iron the edges. So this fabric will go and kind of glue itself to the interfacing. We shouldn't never, never, never press it in the center like that. And when you do that, just don't go till the corner, just in the center, because you can see now this corner is there, so we need to tuck it in, and then 
you can cover wherever the fabric's covered, that's you can go and iron like so. Again, we turn it round and we haven't ironed the corners, but we're now going to iron only in the center like that. And once that's glued on, then just tuck the corner in. Just make sure that this is not coming out. Maybe just make a little fold like that. And now you can go and iron the rest of it like so. Again, let's go ahead and do this side. Just a little bit in the center. And then tuck that in and then you can iron. Basically what we're looking at is when you turn it round, you just need this absolutely beautifully neat shape. Now finally, let's just go ahead and tuck the whole lot in because this is narrow, it's not going to come out on this side. So I can do that. And now let me just go ahead and iron it like so. If it's kind of holding on to the interfacing in the center, then it won't open up because this whole thing is going to go onto the bag and then we're going to edge stitch all around. So go ahead and prepare the other three. Now, what we need to do is take your prepared handle, kind of place it. There's no hard and fast rule about it. It's how it looks good on the eye. If you want to leave more gap like that, go ahead and do it. If you want this to go closer, you can do that. I'm just going to kind of put it there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to attach my handle around the edge to this base first. And then we're going to attach the base to the back. So before we do that, what we need to do is just make sure we have left enough space here to machine sew. So what you need to do is when you place it like so, go ahead and sew from there all around and then we're going to come and finish like so. Okay, just go ahead and place it like so. It's a little bit tricky because you can't pin this to the base because it's too thick and you just have to place it. You can mark it. I don't want to mark it in a white pencil because otherwise I might just um, may not be able to take the marking off. So I'm going to start somewhere over there, leaving enough gap at the back and just making sure the corners, the pointed V match here. Then turn the corner. And then turn the corner again. Fabric was too thick, so I had to give it a bit of push. Okay, we have just sewn in one side of the handle. Now go ahead and place the other side like so. Just make sure you have left the equal amount of gap and go and prepare both the handles in the same way. Okay, here's the handle we have prepared. Now we need to go and patch it up like so. But before we go ahead and do that, I want to patch up a black fabric at the bottom of my bag. The reason I did not do it earlier is my fabric is fraying like crazy because this is a curtain fabric. Um, it could also be used in upholstery. But the thing is, it would be very difficult to match the side seams because this was also having a little bit of wavy effect. So I decided I'm going to patch this up on the top. So this is about three inches wide fabric and I've taken longer than I need till there. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna go and fold about half an inch on one side and make an iron mark. So here's my strip of fabric and I'm just gonna fold about half an inch at the bottom and just go and make the iron mark. Go ahead and do this to the entire strip. Okay, here's the strip that we have just ironed and let me show you what we're going to do. We are going to go and sew at the bottom. I've not only folded on this side, I have also folded a little bit like so, about an inch. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to place it at the edge of the fabric, match the edge of the strip to the edge of your back fabric, and then go and sew a top stitch at the edge. 
we're not going to start right at the edge we're going to start about an inch away because we're going to come back and tuck the fabric in and then close this gap okay we're going to go and start about an inch inch and a half away from the beginning and align the edge of your foot to the edge of this fabric and just go and sew a top stitch Okay, now we're coming to almost the beginning where we started. So I'm just going to tuck this fabric in like so and place the fabric, place this strip like so and just make sure that kind of matches in a straight line and there is no up and down sort of effect. Okay, here is where we started and that's kind of given us a straight seam and uh, this one there's a this is like a this is like a little flap you can either go ahead and sew at the edge but it's not necessary because once this is kind of the bottom base is um, fixed this is not going to show at all and that kind of going to be quite secure so I'm just going to leave it as it is and uh, I'm going to do a stay stitch just at the edge of the fabric because this and this is not kind of holding together. We need this to hold together when we sew the base. The next thing I want to do is go and sew a bias binding like so and uh, probably an inch away from this edge all around. We are going to start and finish exactly the same way we did this bigger strip. We're going to use the same process when we attach the binding. Okay, I have tucked both the corners like that and I have folded the beginning of my binding. So I'm just going to place an inch away from the fabric, place it like so. And if you want to go on pin and tag so that the measurement is right. <coughs> Okay, we're now coming to the starting point here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to let this lay flat underneath and go and join that like so and gently feed under the foot. guys i hope you enjoyed the project leave me a comment below and let me know what you think i shall see you next time bye bye for now